The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at, well, maybe a not that well-known book, a prophet, not that well-known, but Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. Habakkuk was inspired by God to write, the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up, his desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. My dear friends in Christ, Habakkuk was a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah. He also served in the southern kingdom of Judah at the time right before the Babylonian captivity began. His book, it begins with a dialogue between the Lord and Habakkuk. And it concludes with a prayer in which, in which Habakkuk expresses his, his confidence in the Lord and especially in the promise of salvation. Well, in this dialogue, though, Habakkuk begins by actually arguing with God over his ways, which, which, well, we may be inclined to do the same thing as we're living in a very troublesome, sin-filled world. We're often inclined to argue with God because of the things that are going on. Maybe you might have asked the question, why does our God allow a pandemic like COVID to strike our nation and our world like it did? Why does God allow believers in particular to suffer the physical problems that they do in this life, physical problems that can lead a person to despair and depression? Why does God allow that? Or why does God allow a nation to go to war and attack some people who seemingly are innocent and cause them to suffer so. We may have questions like that that are kind of like the questions that Habakkuk is asking in our reading for today. Habakkuk, he looks at what's happening and he thinks that God's way of dealing with things, it's unfathomable, if not even unjust. But then after God replies to the complaints that Habakkuk issued. Habakkuk issues a beautiful confession of his faith in the closing words of this book. He says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. He's saying, of course, that we live in a sinful world with, with all kinds of problems and troubles, but we have a Savior but we have a savior and that's what really matters and how blessed we are even in this sinful world with all of its problems and troubles because we have a savior. 
So never forget, you have a Savior. Never forget as you're faced with life's trials and troubles that you have a Savior from sin. You have someone who lived and died for you, paid for all of your sins. He rose from the dead, and because of that, you can be certain of heaven. Well, over the last couple months in particular, many of you have heard me talking about my dad and his health. And oh, going back a ways, back in January of 2020, that's when when my mom was called home to heaven. And well, we rejoiced in her victory. We continue to rejoice in her victory. She had her share of physical problems, especially in the last few years. She had many physical problems, but now she has none of those problems anymore. None of those problems anymore. She's with the Lord Jesus. And she has the greatest joy that there is, and it's going to last forever. But my dad has kind of had it, had it tough. He's lonely without my mom. He's frustrated because his memory, which, which always had been really great, it isn't what it used to be. And physically, he has his aches and pains. He's needed a cane and recently a walker and, and a wheelchair. And then about a month ago, top things off, he got COVID. And with that COVID, he was further weakened by having that COVID fog, which made him a little bit more confused. But he never forgot he has a Savior. He never forgot he has a Savior. And because of that, he's looking forward to going to his home. And of course, when I say that, of course, he'd love to be able to go back to his home in Hales Corners, Wisconsin. There and at St. Jacoby Lutheran Church, those were the places that he would feel the most comfortable. But of course, now he's looking forward to his home to heaven. And seeing my mom again, that would be absolutely wonderful for him. But more importantly, being with the Savior. Being with our Savior. And having a glorified body and a, and a memory, for example, that a memory, for example, that maybe knows everybody's names, like Moses and Elijah and King David and Abraham and Adam and Eve. Right now he's frustrated. Right now he's frustrated and he knows how Habakkuk felt as he expressed his frustrations in our reading for today. But he knows, but he also knows, as the Lord says in our reading, the righteous will live by his faith. And so, even with his aches and pains and being in the rehab center or nursing home, well, even under so, such situation, he knows that he's really living by faith right now and he knows he's going to really live by faith when the Lord takes him home to heaven. He'll never forget he has a Savior and what joy that gives him. What joy that gives you and me as well. It means that even in his weakened state, I know how strong my dad is in the Lord Jesus. You know, we struggle a lot in this world. And as time goes by, maybe those struggles for us will get greater. We live in a sinful world, but never forget you have a Savior. You have every reason to be filled with joy and peace now and forever in heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give us strength through your word and sacraments so we deal with life's trials and troubles so that we can deal with life's trials and troubles and help us to never forget we have a Savior. We pray in his name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with you always.